What is up, everybody? Welcome to Dead Ball TV. I'm finally doing the video covering Diego Coca being appointed as the new Mexican national team manager. I apologize it took so long. I was in New York City partying. But now I'm back. Now I'm in the studio. So we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to give my thoughts. And I want to hear what you guys think about Diego Coca going to Mexico because I did an entire video and I must have talked about 12 different managers who were linked to the job. And I get my thoughts on them. And Diego Coca was not on that list. So basically, I just wasted your time and mine in making that video. But what I really think that means is not that I'm an idiot and I suck at YouTube, but that this Diego Coca signing is a little weird. And I don't think anybody saw this coming, including... Diego Coca. Now, I don't think he's trash, and I'm going to get my thoughts on him in a second, but before I do, I just want to say, if you like videos about the Mexican national team in English, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and let's talk about this appointment down below, because like I said, I didn't see this coming. I feel like it was kind of a left field, almost like an overly conservative appointment, and I haven't seen a lot of positivity about Diego Coca. I'm going to try to give some positive uh, bullet points of this appointment, but first, let me give a little background about this man. Real quick, because Deadball TV is not a history channel, thank God. Diego Coca is an Argentine manager, he's 51 years old. He's had multiple stints and probably a dozen different jobs in Liga MX and in the Argentine Primavera. You could say Coca's enjoyed moderate success. He's won the domestic cup in Argentina with Racing back in 2013-14 season, and most famously, he won the back-to-back -back titles with Atlas in the Liga MX. Now, on paper, that is extremely encouraging, and people might see that and be like, oh my God, bro, Diego Coca, more like cocaina, bro. He's the Messiah. He's going to lead Mexico to the Copa America 2024 title. Now, as much as I hope that that's going to happen, we got to slow down a little bit. Every time I listen to somebody or read something talking about Diego Coca, I hear the word pragmatic attached to it. And I think pragmatic is a kind of polite way of saying conservative, a polite way of saying defensive. He's almost like, like the Argentine Carlos Quiroz. You know what I mean? Like he's going to set up some low blocks. It's going to be ugly. You know, he's not going to score a lot of goals, but it can get results. And that's what he did with Atlas. And that's why they were so successful, despite not being as good as some of the bigger teams like America, Monterrey, and all those guys. Now, you know who else was pragmatic? Tata Martino, the least popular man in the country of Mexico. And this is where the negatives start with Coca. And I realized I didn't even say that many positives. I mean, other than the fact that he can grind out results, which it's nice to know that he can maybe do that with the Mexican national team. And of course, he could change things, but we're probably going to see some boring fossil football. This is not going to be the high-flying football that somebody like Marcelo Bielsa or even uh, Gustavo Alfaro would have likely brought to Mexico. What we're probably going to see is a 3-5-2 or 4-4-2. And unfortunately, I think we're going to see a lot of, you know, one nil snooze fest against El Salvador. That being said, if Coca can win stuff with Mexico, will we care? You know, when we look back, on the history books and see that Mexico won a gold cup, won a Copa America. Are we going to care that it was boring football, that we won every game in extra time on pens, that it was one nothing against Jamaica in the group stage to finish second and barely progress at the 2025 gold cup? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. Would you take success with Mexico if the football was really boring to watch. And not only is the football sometimes very boring and overly conservative, but I have to say of all the managers that were linked with Mexico, this is one that I don't know who heard the news and got excited. I certainly didn't get excited, especially when you saw the names that were initially attached to the job. And so I guess when I saw that Diego Coca got appointed, it just makes all the talk of, you know, what Yonda Luis is talking about, like, oh, we've learned from this fracaso, we're going to change a bunch of things. It's just noise, bro. Like, it makes it seem like they're playing us again, just like a fiddle. They're going to appoint the same old dude that they can control, not somebody who's going to come in and try to break up the hierarchy, like a Bielsa. Like, Bielsa doesn't play games. Almada, very outspoken manager, some guy who's probably not going to be okay with being told what is and is not acceptable, not a rule follower. Coca kind of seems like a rule follower. Now, again, he could prove me wrong. He could prove everybody wrong, and, and I think this is a good time to say he should be given a chance. I see a lot of hate already online. I think it's a little quick. It's a little quick, and I'm not happy about this appointment. I'm not pissed off, but I'm certainly uninspired. If there's one word to classify how I feel. It's uninspired. I just saw it, and I was like, oh, and we're trying to be taken seriously. Now, that being said, that being said, we've seen managers come in who are relatively unknowns on the international stage, Gareca being one of them, 
and doing really well. Gareca didn't always play very sexy football with Peru because he didn't have a very good team, but he got them to a World Cup, was a penalty shootout from doing it again, got them on the podium at Copa Americas. I bet most Peruvians don't care that he didn't play attacking football because he got the job done. Now, like I said earlier, that's your personal decision to make. Are you okay with sacrificing the beauty of the game to win trophies? You, again, you guys let me know in the comments how you feel about that. Coca deserves a chance. All I can say is I pray to God that he just cleans house with these older players. Now, that's another thing I keep seeing a knock about him is he didn't give a lot of young guys a chance at Atlas. I was looking at it. There was a few like young center backs that he was playing quite often. So I don't know if that reputation is fully warranted. Again, I'm not an Atlas fan. I'm not a huge Liga Mekis guy either. So don't come at me and be like, you freaking idiot he never played anybody younger than 29 everybody out there like already had a grandchild i'll finish the video by saying this for diego coca this is an amazing job this is an amazing opportunity one that you could argue was not even earned right so can we really fault the guy for taking the job bro i mean i feel like most managers even if they felt like they were out of their depth they're gonna take the mexican national team job and i was reading his press conferences and it's so vanilla bro it's mumbo jumbo like i know the mexican player in and out i'm gonna build an identity you know we're gonna come in here and we're gonna change things just cookie cutter bs responses and this is why people think you're a pawn this is why people think that grupo caliente and the liga mekis mafia just put this guy in here now i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt but if i see some evidence start to build up I'm going to put on my Sherlock Holmes hat and I'm going to come out here and I'm going to be like, this man is a fraud. This man is working for the ops, the ops of the Mexican national team. I will say that. But for right now, I'm not, I'm not going to crucify him. I'm not going to sentence him to death without even seeing him play one game. And I think his first games are Nations League against Suriname and Jamaica. I mean, Jesus Christ, bro. Like, what a waste of time. It's honestly a lose-lose for him. He could, If he beats both of them, like, nobody's going to give him flowers. If he draws even one game, if Suriname score a goal, if Geraldo Becker bangs in a 30-yard free kick, then everyone's going to already be saying, Coca out. I'm going to give this man a chance somewhat reluctantly, but what are we supposed to do? He's been appointed. Let's see what he can do. That's the video. You guys let me know your thoughts down below on this appointment. Is this an absolute travesty? Mexico have they fumbled it yet again or are you going to give this man a chance you're going to be like me you're going to give him the benefit of the doubt you know Jesus he turned the other cheek I'm not really sure how that um, relates to what's going on with this appointment for the Mexican national team but hopefully you guys kind of get what I'm trying to say let me know down below in the comments leave a like if you enjoyed hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this and I'll see you guys in the next video <laughs>